the biblical truth of our hymn. Sorry, the screen's a little dark. Got everything closed. It's hot outside. So the biblical truth of our hymns. And today we're going to look at Fanny Crosby near the cross. And there'll be nothing bad said about this hymn. It says, Jesus. What did I say? I said, Jesus. Stanza 1, verse 1, Jesus. Now, we did multiple. We've done many. We're up in this hymn book I'm using right now, myself. It's, this is the 288, and we haven't done all 288. Some of you know, we just... But we've done many. And... I'm trying to find my list right here. Let's see what we have here. So far we have... I have 86 right now listed hymns that we've done and sometimes some got lost and didn't get listed and events happened. I wish when I first started this study and I know I don't know if the first hymn but I know it was very beginning of this study that we started. I started to mention how infrequent the name of Jesus is found in the hymns that we study. And many we have not studied. But I've probably taken the popular ones, the ones known in the church today, good or bad, scriptural, not scriptural. Uh, we've looked at them, and it's amazing how many does not have the name of Jesus. And as I was saying, I wish I had started keeping count. I wish I could have said, this is the 80, whatever, that such and such has had Jesus, and such and such hymns had not the name of Jesus. And I'm going to leave that to yourself to go back to the study of the biblical truth or hymns to find out yourself because that's one of the things I pointed out. No name of Jesus or Jesus. And this hymn begins with the name of Jesus. And it says, Jesus keep me near the cross. Now that's remarkable for one instance is the title of the hymn in the hymn book is near the cross. Now, the lyrics that were written by William Howard Doane were written, I mean, the, 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 the music written by Howard, uh, William Doane was written before the words were written by Fanny Crosby. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Pardon me. The words came after. And it's remarkable to put to the fact Jesus keep me near the cross is the actual title the original title by Fanny Crosby and yet the music near the cross We have titled this hymn by the music near the cross, William Doane. And we have been absence of the writer, Jesus keep me near the cross. Jesus keep me near the cross is the original title of what Fanny J, Fanny J. Crosby writ written her her poem about Jesus and when I say it's remarkable to find the hymns that do not have the name of Jesus here's a hymn that has the name of Jesus and yet the title does not have Jesus 
And if you remember when we went a while back and you go find it, we did it. Um, oh, what's that hymn book? The Old Rugged Cross. I don't sing the Old Rugged Cross. And you'll find if you go back and look it up in our study, I believe the Old Rugged Cross is all about the cross and not about Jesus. I'm not going to cling a piece of wood. I'm going to cling to my Savior. God manifested in the flesh. And I think we've done that with this hymn, not Fanny J. Crosby, but I think we've done the title and the music to the cross and let's just drop Jesus. And I've been told by a well-known preacher, now going home and going to be in glory, that there was a time that churches had a sign outside their churches that Jesus is the answer. And people got offended and then it became God is the answer. And people, you know, the atheists got offended and, and just the answer. But we're holding to a, a, a hymn book that is not going to give no name. Copyrighted. 2006. This is 2020. And I'm doing the fair use copyright law that I am using this for, for instruction of learning. That we have taken a, a hymn written by a woman who marvelously loved the Lord Jesus Christ, blinded as a child. And we can start off with the stanza saying, hey, there's Jesus. Stanza one, first word. And yet, when we look at the, the, the title, and when the song leader or the pastor of your church saying, we're going to sing near the cross. Pastor, song leader, let's give it its proper title. Jesus, keep me near the cross. The title has dropped the name of Jesus. That amazes me when in the book of Acts chapter 4 says, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And that name is the name of Jesus. And we find in the hymn books, which are not inspired by God as the Bible, and we find the name of Jesus. Lacking. I don't know why. Are they ashamed of the name of Jesus? Do they deny the name of Jesus? Jesus, keep me near the cross. That's where life begins. That's where salvation, listen, you can't come to God's salvation without coming first to the cross. It's not the Baptist church. It's not the altar. It's coming to Calvary. And coming to Calvary, the cross is not good enough. Is when you're looking at the cross and you see God manifesting on that, on that cross and his blood, which is the blood of God. Acts 20 28 you got to look at that blood re, uh, you got to look at that bleeding suffering sacrifice of sin Isaiah 53 God on that cross you can't be a Jehovah witness because you got to say that is God on the cross with God's blood and you've got to drop to your knees and say I am a wicked vile sinner what on earth are you doing on that cross? And I am not. I'm a Barabbas. Barabbas was supposed to be on that cross that afternoon. Not Jesus. So when you just say near the cross and drop Jesus, let's just go to that hunk of piece of wood. And let's just cleave to that hunk of piece of wood and drop Jesus. Friend, you're a Catholic. And that cross becomes your relic. 
And it just becomes a symbol in any everyday Baptist church, the cross, without Jesus. That's right. My Jesus is not nailed to that cross. But the hymns and churches have gone to the cross of Jesus and have taken Jesus and just removed him out of the picture. Fanny Crosby says, listen, it's put Jesus back in it. Now, he's not nailed to that cross today. That crucifix that, that people wear and, and hang in churches that Jesus is on that cross. Not, no, he's not on that cross. He's at the seated at the right hand of the Father. You see, some of the Baptist churches, they have a cross too, but theirs don't have Jesus on it. And what they've done, they, they put the cross and put the name of Jesus and the person of Jesus and the God of Jesus, and they put him off in the corner somewhere. And look at the old rugged cross nonsense. They're a precious fountain. And what is that precious precious fountain it's the blood of jesus christ that cleanses from all sin free to all free god uh shall i bring an oxen no god do i need to bring a lamb nope i'm the lamb of god god do you want a money offering no god you want a tithe no God, you want me to give up my Sundays for the rest of my life? No. God, you don't want my wallet? No. You don't want my check in the book? No. You don't want me to go become a membership of a church? No. You don't want me to have a position? No. For by grace he saved through faith and not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, at least any man boasts. It's free. It's a healing stream. There's coming a day, though I have pains and sorrows and troubles and agony and, and need a doctor on this on this earth and, and have to go to a doctor and have to have medication. There's coming a day that when I'm absent from this body or the day that the Lord raptures those, God's got the greatest well of 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 health care ever he's going to remove what causes the need for health care and that is called sin and in holy and righteousness i'm going to god's heaven where there is no need of pain or sorrow or troubles or healing no longer flows from calvary's mountain what flows what is the fountain? What is the stream? It is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's blood, Acts 20, 28. Near the cross. And we see that in verse, stanza three, near the cross, stanza four, near the cross. We got that, near the cross. But the very first standard, stanza, stanza. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Oh, we don't need that as a title. That's a shame. Near the cross, a trembling soul. Why is my soul trembling? I'll tell you why the soul is trembling according to the modern church today. Okay. You didn't say nothing. That's correct. Why is that soul trembling at, at the cross where Jesus suffered and died? Because that soul, if it does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it will not be saved, and it will go off forever, all eternity, in a lake of fire that burneth forever. Listen, I've had saved Christians who have been part of our, our ministry, and they got angered and turned away because I preached about hell. Can't be part of you, you know, you're too much about hell. And they were rebuked by another. And still they did not get right with God. Boy, that, that happens quite frequently in my life, dealing with Christians. 
They are wrong against my living of the Bible. They get rebuked and they still walk away. And they don't come back. That soul, when it's witnessed to, comes to the point when it's at Calvary. And it is the true biblical message, not of toys and not of fairs and not of carnality and not of Tootsie Rolls. It is, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. But Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And what must you do to be saved? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything else is a prosperity gospel. And that trembling soul needs that precious fountain, needs that healing stream, needs that flow of God's blood for a sinner. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Or depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's off into a lake of fire that burneth forever. Love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not be saved. For, uh, for God's not willing that any should perish. For we love him because he first loved us. Love and mercy found me. You want love and mercy? Don't go running to the world. Don't go running to Satan. Satan does not know love. Satan does not know mercy. The world's love is artificial. The world's love is uh, mercy is artificial. God's love and mercy is pure. It is holy. And it's Jesus Christ. Found me. You didn't go searching for God. Because if you turn and went searching for God, you would have been found of God. And it is the Holy Spirit that draweth men unto God. And how does God find you? Go get you. By someone leaving a gospel track, by a co-worker opening a Bible to show you, by hearing preaching on a radio or in a church or on the street, or a cassette tape or a CD or MP3. Somebody has opened the word of God to you to reveal to your soul that it is going to hell without the sacrifice of the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. There, the bright capital B and morning capital M star capital S, and that's all biblical, Shed his beams round me, the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He is the blood of God, for he is God, and he is the light. And when you come to the cross of Jesus, and your soul is trembling, and you have been revealed to the love and mercy of God, It's a remarkable instant, what God has done. And when we go to John chapter 3, John chapter 3, it states, For whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What's that name? Is that name Jesus? That's missing from the title. That's missing from hymns. This is the condemnation that light 
is come in the world. She talks about his beams round me. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And neither cometh to the light, least his deeds be reproved. And here is somebody who's come to the cross. Somebody has opened the Bible to, to a soul that you're going to hell. You are lost. You need the Lamb of God to take away the sin of your work of, of your take you take away your sin. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they see that light, they close their eyes, they turn away from the cross and say, No. I love my darkness and sin more than that, that man on that cross. Get it away from me. Turn off the light. And that's the many that go the broad way which leads to destruction. But, John 3.21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Here, his beam shone around me. That his deeds may be made manifest. Yes, I'm a sinner, Lord. That they are wrought in God. Now I'm telling you, I was saved. April 25th, 1987. And in studying the scriptures here in 2020 and reading in the Bible to realize I am a lot more sinner I am aware of than I was aware of April 25th, 1987. Since April 25th, 1987, I'm reading in the Bible, I realize, you know, I, there's a lot of sins I've done. And if, if I confess my sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You got to have the Bible to become a, a Christian. You got to have that Bible. You better have a Bible when you kneel at the cross to receive Jesus Christ. No Bible. There's no salvation. You say, well, I had a gospel track. Gospel track has Bible. It's the word of God that cleanses us. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That Lamb of God is Jesus Christ, the Passover Lamb. Bring it seems before me. Lord, show me the death and burial and resurrection according to the scriptures. Alighten to me what you've done for me. Help me walk from day to day. You see, when you come to the cross and receive Jesus Christ, and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you don't die. If we, it would be great. And at the moment we got saved, we died and went to glory. But then again, we would not have rewards and crowns. Because rewards and crowns are earned after the day of salvation according to our works, not for salvation, but because we are saved. Life is a struggle. And I'm, I'm struggling right now in my Christian walk because I am lonely and I want God to give me a wife. God's taking care of me. God loves me. God is, is working in my life. But there's one thing missing. And for your, for your life and for my life, after salvation, we need help day to day from the moment that we open up our eyeballs if we're going to live right for God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, the devil wakes up with us and his devils of hell. 
Now, you want to be saved and you want to live carnal. You want to live in the world and you don't want to. The devil doesn't care. The devil does not need to worry about you. But if you're going to live right, you're going to talk right, and, and you're going to fail, you're going to sin even after salvation when the Bible says, if we confess our sins, that is a written to a man that's saved, to a woman that is saved already. You're going to sin still. Brethren, sin not, but if we sin, we have an advocate. The Lord Jesus Christ. We need help. Not daily. But she said day to day. And I, I'm not rebuking. I'm just saying we need help hourly. Every hour. And more so for Christians who are suffering of pain. And sorrow. Of loss. Of trouble. When the world and the Christians are against you for doing right. And I've got Christians against me for doing right. I've got the world against me for doing right. There are Christians today in 2020. A, 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 tragedy, a tragedy has happened to them. A loved one has been put into a hospital. And because of coronavirus. You can't go into the hospital to visit the loved one. There are loved ones put inside of a convalescent care. There are loved ones put into rehab centers to get better. And the loved ones cannot come and visit and encourage them because of coronavirus. You need help every day. They need to and we need to pray for all of them. There may be a Christian right now that's on the brink of giving up. Help me walk day to day. And for them, there may not be a tomorrow. They need help today. This is a woman that was blinded by, by a quack. A doctor that mispracticed diagnosis of a young girl to lose her, her eyesight. And yet she gave the glory to God. And I don't think, I would not think that Fanny J. Cosby's life was always hunky-dory, great and wonderful. I guarantee she would have times in her life that there was, I need help today. Lord, I need help. If I don't get help, what's going to happen? With its shadow over me, that shadow from the heat of the day, when it's hot, today it's hot, and I'm trying to not use the AC as possible because the bill, and I got all the windows closed, that's why it's dark on the screen, and it, oh Lord, I... When you go out in a hot, dry day, and the Lord gives you shade. We're doing that in, in Psalms today. Psalms, um, check it out. Uh, the Psalms we're doing today. You want to pay attention? Today, later on, tonight, 7 p.m., we're, we're talking about that Psalms 121. Talking about that heat of the day. 7 p.m. Our family Bible study. Near the cross. I'll watch and wait. Now. That's not, that's not at Calvary. You don't come to Calvary, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, and then pull up a lounge chair and stay there. Not when the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. You go into a Bible-believing church where wherever the frequency that the pastor decides for the Lord's Supper, 
whether weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, whatever the pastor decides. And when you partake of the Lord's Supper, it is to remind you of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus and his coming. You're not to forget the suffering Savior on that cross and don't nail him back to that cross. Hebrews says he sacrificed once. And you don't go around wearing Jesus on a cross between your breasts. And uh, people say, well, you know, show me the, the crucifix. And that's, uh, I'm a Christian. No, it's not. That's a piece of metal, plastic, or wood. And one of the churches in, this, in the church age period of Revelation, between Revelation 1 and, and chapter 4, one of the churches, they forgot their first love. And like Jacob going back to Bethel and being reminded of what God set forth for him and what he promised God. We need to go back to our Bethel and that is the place where we met Jesus Christ. Now physically, I, I can't go back to Bethel. If I were to go knocking on the door, if I go to the door where I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, that house does not belong to my grandparents no more. My grandparents are in glory. From my understanding, that house has been sold. If I go knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, sir, may I come into your living room so I can, no, and they may say, no. Who are you, you fool? You're crazy. Call the police. Get this guy off my property. And they would have all right. And it may not be a physical activity to go back to your Bethel, but you can go back to Bethel anywhere you are to go back to remind you where you met Jesus on that cross and seen him come out of that empty tomb day by day. Hoping. You are to have hope. The blessed hope and the glorious coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Trusting ever. Don't ever give up hope and don't ever give up on Jesus Christ. Don't ever do it. Keep forward, keep your mark on Jesus and keep going straight day by day. Till I reach that golden strand, heaven. Just beyond the river. It ain't finished till we get to Calvary. And when we come to Calvary, our old man is finished. And when you get saved, you become a new creature. And you live a new life. You are now a child of God. You are saved. And the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel and grow up in the Lord through the word. Keep on going from them till you get to Jesus. It's plain and simple. Keep growing. Keep heading for the Lord. Keep going. Keep heading for the Lord. Paul says, for I am as straight as it's too, having a desire to part me with Christ, which is far better. You know what Paul's ambition was? I want to go be with Christ. You know what my ambition is? I want to go be with Christ. Today. God's like, you ain't ready yet today. Still building that mansion. You got to keep going. Listen, my loneliness right now, I want to go home. I can't see tomorrow, and I'm not supposed to see tomorrow. I'm supposed to be hoping and trusting ever. The Lord says, okay, now it's time. Now, a lot of times we're coming to the refrain, the chorus. The chorus is not written by the writer in general. It may have been added. And from what I've seen, I don't know. In the cross. Well, Penny Crosby said, Jesus keep me. 
I think if Fanny would have wrote her line, of course, would be, in Jesus, in Jesus, be my glory forever. Till my ransom soul shall find rest. Be I would think Fanny Crosby wrote, instead of in the cross, in the cross. It ain't in the cross. It's in Jesus. And what we forget is there were three crosses on Calvary's Mount that day. And the man on one cross went to hell. And the man on another cross went to heaven through Jesus. And the man that died in the middle the cross, he's God manifested in the flesh. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the salvation. And ain't the sticks. And ain't the wood. It is the man Christ Jesus. And you got to be careful because when you go in the cross to piece of wood, in the cross to piece of wood, an average Catholic is going to think that wooden piece of garbage. How dare you say, okay, now, now, now see, you got a holy relic. Because what happened to that cross? It ended up in the garbage somewhere. Yes, the cross of Jesus is somewhere to be whatever. And there's all kinds of stories, and I don't believe stories. I believe the Bible. The man that died on that cross was Jesus. The cross had nothing to do with the salvation. The blood that Jesus shed was the blood of God. It is through Jesus, not that piece of wood, that I have eternal life. Through Jesus Christ alone. And even beyond the river. Beyond heaven, New Jerusalem and the eternal life. It's all, listen, we're not going to see the cross in New Jerusalem. I read the book of Revelation. There is the, the, the altar of incense. There's the mercy seat. The, the, there is uh, uh, the throne of God. There, there, there's the cherubim. There's the four and 24 elders. There's the, the green rainbow around the throne because you haven't read the Bible. There's the holy heavenly city of New Jerusalem that has 12 foundations, that has 12 gates, has one city of pure gold, and the light of it is the light of the land that's forever. I don't see the cross in New Jerusalem. But I see Jesus, the Lamb of God, in Jerusalem. You got to stop taking the cross as your means of salvation and be the one who died on the cross, who suffered on the cross as your means of salvation. Listen, if you're trusting that hunk of wood, you're going to go to hell and you're going to go to hood, hell without that wood. I believe there will be people going to hell because they trusted the cross and not the one who died on the cross. I mean, I, listen, I've been witnessing since, listen, the, the day after I got saved, I've been witnessing. April 25th, I, I got saved. April 26th, at 6, I began witnessing. I've had people, I said, uh, do you know where you're going to go when you when you die? I know where you're going to go to heaven. Okay, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? And they pull out this cross between their, 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 their breasts. Or they'll show me a tattoo of their cross. I don't have one. I'm just showing a demonstration. And I'll say, well, you know, it's Jesus that died. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, may get you in hell. It better be an old Jesus. See, the Catholics have a crucifix with Jesus nailed to the cross. I've been, I was a Roman Catholic. I got saved. Baptists have their cross, too. It has no Jesus on it, but... What are you going to say? This hymn near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a big difference. Big. 